Greetings to whoever is listening to this transmission, wherever you may be in the world. My name is Jordan Bianchi. I'm a multi-hyphenated storyteller, a writer, a filmmaker, and a photographer. I'm honored to have you join me on the first episode of Aurora Airwaves. This has been a project of mine for the past few years, and I'm overjoyed to be able to begin this adventure with you all. So let's begin. Close your eyes, if you're able to, and imagine that you're in a land far from where you are now. You're outside, high in the lands of the Arctic. The wind is cold, and the land is quiet. Flakes of snow are falling down all around, on your cheeks and hair. You take a seat beside a fire I've built, sit cross-legged on the frozen ground, rub your mitten-covered hands together. As you warm yourself by the flames, the clouds above clear in the nighttime sky until all at once it erupts in a burst of light. Brilliant curtains of light emanate across the atmosphere in a kaleidoscope of colors. They dance and sway among the stars. This is a phenomenon like none other. These lights have many names and many stories. Nordlis, Revantulet, Aksangnit, Aurora Borealis, the Northern Lights. People of the world have been mystified by these unique manifestations since they first saw them. As they sat around outdoor fires like this one with friends and family, their imaginations conjured dazzling stories to accompany the seemingly magical display overhead. There are as many tales about the aurora as there are circumpolar cultures, who within these curtains of light saw the souls of the dead dancing in the sky, fires caused by magical foxes, even the shimmering armor of cosmic warriors. They saw celestial gatherings, weddings of the heavens, the wings, hooves, and scales of sacred spirits. Some knew them to be celestial dragons in battle. Others spoke of them as torches, lit to guide the spirits to the realm of the deceased. Birth and death, celebration and bloodshed, the whole of human existence was all felt in these lights. Although the Northern Lights have been known to stretch to where I'm from, Buffalo, a city close to Niagara Falls in the Northeastern United States, the conditions had never been right for me to see them. Clouds often obstruct the view when Aurora hunters spread word of their possible arrival. But I dreamt about them before I knew anything about these rich stories or how the phenomenon naturally form. I did as I have always done. I wrote about them. A fantasy story began to flicker within me. My dream was of people with the Northern Lights within them. This dream manifested when I was in college. I was doubtful at the beginning and depressed, but I'd finally allowed myself to become immersed in the cinema program that I was enrolled in. I was shooting movies, writing scripts, reading books, and meeting people who had similar dreams and ambitions to mine. For most of my adolescence, I had numbed myself and removed myself from opportunities that felt truly good to me. But finally, I had arrived. In a screenwriting class, I dreamt of my story that revolved around the Northern Lights. I don't remember how I was drawn to them. Perhaps it was from my upbringing. My French-speaking mom led our family on multiple adventures to Quebec City, the Ile d'Orléans, Montreal, and we got a taste of northern climates and a land rich with lore. As I was stepping out of the darkness of my own life, filled with so much hope and passion, I clung to the visualization of the auroras. Even in the myriad of films and stories I wrote that had nothing to do with them in the years to come, I somehow knew the energy I felt that encouraged me to participate and share myself with the world was synonymous with the energy of the aurora. This energy, 
was the answer to the aimless life I had been living. I let my passion run free and create stories that moved and thrilled those who had experienced them. I was soaring. So I kept writing. I wrote and I wrote until I couldn't write anymore. As the seasons changed and the years passed, the auroras came and went, in and out of my life. After college, I was working and studying, directing, in graduate schools in New York. And then all at once, something inside of me told me it was time to stop. I had my book and scripts to write, I told myself. I'm too busy for this, I said. I packed up, left opportunities behind, and traveled back home. Even though I couldn't articulate it at the time, when I said I'd left to write my stories, I was in search of my story. I had found success in film school, and I was beginning to see myself as an artist, but I had no idea who I was as a person. I just couldn't connect to him. I couldn't find him. I was telling other people's stories, characters whose lives I valued more importantly than my own. Time and time again, as I took steps closer to honing in on my craft, I began to create to impress the industry and the people around me, and completely ignored the energy that swirled within me, the energy that stemmed from my heart. Days became months, which turned into years, and I cut myself off from the world, numbing myself from all feeling and experiences other than my craft. Of course, that could not go on forever. The guilt I felt for never finishing my grand stories festered into shame and regret, utterly paralyzing me from participating in life itself. The charismatic person that I thought I was had become someone who was afraid to speak, afraid to be seen. I'd tried to write, I'd tried to create, and while I did learn a great deal, I couldn't finish my larger works. Why couldn't I break through? Why couldn't I be more disciplined, focus harder? The more I pushed, the further away my projects felt, and the more difficult it was to cope with their incompletion. I grew older, and I fell back into my isolation, into my depression. I was convinced I was a failure, that my life was a string of mistakes, that I'd wrongly perceived as heroic moments of triumph all lies I'd constructed in my own head. I clung to the imagery of the aurora once again, determined to understand their significance while trying to write under the darkness of the ever-present dread that my creative spirit was fading and my book and my dreams would never come to light. But even though it was overshadowed, my heart still quietly disagreed with the voice in my head. I clung to the energy of the aurora, which I now understand was a way of holding on to the truth of my heart, of keeping my creative spirit alive. Even though they were obscured by darkness, the auroras still swirled within me. I just couldn't see them. In late 2019, a friend and I booked a trip to see the Northern Lights in the Arctic city of Tramza in Norway. Much to our dismay, the trip became impossible as the coronavirus pandemic shut down travel in March of 2020. A cloud formed over me. I thought if I could just see the Northern Lights, maybe they would activate something in me, send some otherworldly cosmic energy, some knowing to me that would give me all the answers I needed to write my book and move on with my life to be done with this constricting, lonesome, dark era. Perhaps they would give me some better sense of what this life could be. So why wouldn't the universe want me to see them? I began to grow more and more and more frustrated. Eventually, in 2020, I found my mentor, my spiritual guru, who taught me Eastern philosophies and how to love myself so I could begin to heal my spirit, learn who I am, see my worth, my energies, and lighten the way 
that I talk to myself. Over the course of the next few years, I studied these lessons, knowing that I had to forget everything my mind was telling me I knew and work to reunite with the truth of my heart. I finally confronted dark shadows from my past, one after another. And after witnessing the echoes of anger and terror, I saw light, my light from within. I found a way to become friends with my shadows. After all, they're a part of me. And I saw my light finally entering the world again. It was something I hadn't felt since I was a child. In my healing, I realized something. The reason I dreamt about the Northern Lights was not at all because they were going to give me the energy from beyond that would magically hear me, but because they mirrored the light that was within me. Their purpose in my imagination was to show me that I was yearning to connect with myself, the purest parts of me, and the parts of me that knew were joy and love, passion and excitement, painting, laughter, and how to be gentle. They were always there, encouraging me to heal myself and dance with the freedom of creativity and human expression. I saw I was filled with light, that I was filled with life, a bountiful energy source tapped into the greatness of the universe, was all within my heart and my body. It had always been there. I just wasn't ready to see it. It felt identical to the radiant bliss of the swaying auroras. The kaleidoscope of life in all its colors and emotions were within me in all of its complexities and abundance. I could see that I was not a broken person. I was a person who had done nothing wrong. I was a person, a being of light, like the characters in my stories, who was experiencing this life as a human. I'd been choosing not to see and feel what glorious opportunities for awareness life was offering me. Now I understand. There is aurora energy within us all. This light is passion, it is love. It is the whispers that speak to us from within with knowing of how beautiful this life can be. Now it is important to note that the night sky is not loved solely because of the Northern Lights. It is all celestial. It is all beauty, light and dark. Both are in the sky, above, and both are within us all. Darkness guides us in the direction of who we really are. Darkness can help us gain gratitude, see opportunities, gain autonomy, and remember who we are. There are teachings in what our inner shadows hold. Sorrow, joy, grief, guilt, shame, fear. Darkness, like light, is neither good nor bad. They are energies that we must experience. We must allow ourselves to experience what stories about ourselves they have to offer us. For when we let our shadows go, the aurora energy within us can truly soar. This process of finding our auroras is simply us being there for ourselves. We can learn to be there for ourselves and communicate that love that we feel. I'm beginning to feel again, and I want to encourage you to experience this as well. My beliefs had to change. My definitions had to change. I was searching for light alone in the darkness. Eventually, I saw glimpses, beacons of light, who helped me. It has taken me 10 years to understand what the message of the auroras was, what they were trying to tell me. I learned how to see that the darkness was inside of me, not around me. My shadows were and are me, and they needed to be met with love, just as my light did, just like it does. Which is why I found it imperative to begin this podcast, Aurora Airwaves. As I learned to heal, I found that stories, music, conversations, and meditation all gave me opportunities to slow down, sit with my body, and experience my feelings. They helped me dissect my thoughts and offered me the opportunity to see glimpses of the light 
and dark that were within me. This is what I want to offer you. Through Aurora Airwaves, I will share my auroras and the auroras of others in the form of stories, poems, personal reflections on creativity and life. Each episode will feature conversations with talented individuals and friends on well-being and artistry that revolve around the same question, how can we care for ourselves while we create our art and create our lives? We will learn about the forms of self-care, identifying beyond art, and creating a balanced life. How to understand that self-worth cannot stem from how productive one is. That loving oneself is far more important than any project can ever be. And in certain parts of life, must be learned and prioritized. At the end of every episode, we will end with a meditation to help guide our own unique healing. Aurora Airwaves is a space where you can step outside the stressors of everyday life and begin, episode by episode, to see the light and shadows within you. I healed because a similar space was created for me. Now I want to extend that to you. I encourage you to use this space as a place of refuge and reflection. I urge you to allow and accept whatever emotions arise while listening. I urge you to not judge those energies, but instead to see them as a gift that you get to experience. My hope is for you to meditate along with me and the other listeners under the visualization of the Northern Lights and find and see your own auroras. This space is for you as much as it is for me. The journey of healing and growing can never be complete. Let's use this time together to care for ourselves and know that others are alongside us in our darkness, as well as in our light. I do not know where these episodes will take us, but I know that in the end, our hearts will be grateful that we went on this journey together. Now I'd like to read you a poem called Flightless on the Way to the North that I wrote during my period of healing. It tells the story of a red fox who sails north in search of the mythic northern lights. But when his hot air balloon crash lands on an island of white foxes, he searches for meaning that leads him to discover his inner light. This poem is set within the world of a children's novel that I've been working on for the past year. Here's Flightless on the way to the north. As a kit, I'd always dreamt of chasing northern skies, to sail beneath the arcs of light that sway and mesmerize. These dreams of light, they beaconed hope, that greatness was for me. They kept me fierce and full and free, that nothing could not be. I sew my sails, kiss kin goodbye, and leave the land I know. The stars, they guide me northern bound, and encourage me ever so. As Aurora's skies are within my reach, storm clouds overtake my sight. A rush of wind cascades of snow. My sails, they rip. I fall below. Alone and saddened on an icy shore, ashamed and full of woe, reckless I had flown and failed to see Cosmic threads, so curtains aglow. But the villagers of this northern isle, they listen to my heart's defeat. Their pelts all white, their manners sweet. They take me in and bake warm treats. Although the sun here does not rise, the villagers don't strain their eyes by candlelight or lighthouses bright. They make their own joy and dance all night. Perhaps this land will be my home in a burrow under mounds of snow. But can I simply, permanently forget my dreams to soar? When the wind stirs, crisp and cool, creases in its speak. It beckons me to take the chance to stretch my wings and leap. 
the lights beyond that summon still are not just in the northern sky. They mirror what is deep inside, a part of me I tried to hide. My dreams burn bright within me still, and for that I must be strong. My inner light was meant to soar to the aurora's prismatic song. So whether we choose to take a step and hoist ourselves into the sky, or rest on coastlines, tired, spent, while ships sail by and by, we must be gentle, not so hard to meet our dreams with grace. When timing's true, storm clouds will clear and welcome our embrace. Upon completion of this poem, my friends and I brought it to life in a medium which has grown dear to my heart in the past few years, the audio drama. I'm honored to share with you the audio drama of Flightless on the Way to the North, narrated by Keith Gallucci, with music composed and performed by Eddie Irvin, and edited by Amanda Vince. I hope you enjoy. Flightless on the Way to the North by Jordan Bianchi As a kid, I'd always dreamt of chasing northern skies to sail beneath the arcs of light that sway and mesmerize. These dreams of light, they beaconed hope that greatness was for me. They kept me fierce and full and free, that nothing could not be. I sew my sails, kiss kin goodbye, and leave the land I know. The stars, they guide me northern bound and encourage me ever so. As aurora skies are within my reach, Storm clouds overtake my sight. A rush of wind, cascades of snow. My sails, they rip. I fall below. Alone and saddened on an icy shore. Ashamed and full of woe. Reckless I had flown and failed to see cosmic threads so curtains aglow. But the villagers of this northern isle, they listen to my heart's defeat. Their pelts all white, their manners sweet. They take me in and bake warm treats. Although the sun here does not rise, the villagers don't strain their eyes. By candlelight or lighthouses bright, they make their own joy and dance all night. Perhaps this land will be my home, in a burrow under mounds of snow. But can I simply, permanently, forget my dreams to soar? When the wind stirs, crisp and cool, creases in its speak, it beckons me to take the chance to stretch my wings and leap. The lights beyond that summon still are not just in the northern sky. They mirror what is deep inside, a part of me I'd tried to hide. My dreams burn bright within me still, and for that I must be strong. My inner light was meant to soar to the aurora's prismatic song. So whether we choose to take a step and hoist ourselves into the sky, or rest on coastlines tired, spent, while ships sail by and by, we must be gentle not so hard to meet our dreams with grace. When timing's true, storm clouds will clear and welcome our embrace.
Now I'd like for you to close your eyes. Imagine the auroras overhead. They swirl in thick curtains of unbelievable heights. Every color imaginable dances above your head. Shades of reds, blues, yellows, greens, violets. You can almost hear them sway over the silent land, which is blanketed in fresh snow. The lights above are here for you. They mirror what is deep within you. Take a deep breath. Feel the light of the sky dance beneath your skin, through your muscles, your organs, down to your legs and your toes, to your abdomen, to your chest, your fingers, your neck, your head and your crown. Feel the warmth, your inner glow. Repeat after me. The light of life dances within me. The light of life dances within me. The light of life dances within me. Now meditate on this feeling that you are experiencing for a few moments. Breathe slowly and allow your body to relax. The universe supports you and your light. The light of life dances within me.
Thank you for spending time with me under the Northern Lights. I look forward to sharing more with you in our next episode. Your friend, Jordan.